Whether it's revamping an old space or bringing a classic floor back to life, watch as three professionals tackle age, neglect, and misuse that have produced some of the dirtiest and stickiest floors. Kate Deer, the CEO of Fetwell, walks us through how she deep cleans a bank floor made in 1908. It hasn't been touched in seven years, and she's revamping the space into a wedding venue. She found the tile under the carpet during an asbestos inspection and decided to deep clean it so it could be part of the new space. The carpet is very thick and therefore heavy, so the first thing she does is get the carpet off and let the tile breathe. The carpet glue was the thickest she'd ever encountered and completely covered the tile underneath. The moisture and heat from the steam are some of the only things that would seep through the glue to loosen it. After she hits it with the steamer, she scrapes it up and starts sanding the top layer where the glue stained the tile with a yellow haze. She adds Zep Floor Stripper, which liquefies the glue so she's able to scrape it up with a blade. When areas of the carpet glue become really tough to remove, she puts down a marble polish to help buff out those sections. The floor is old and uneven, so her team needs to use a bristle brush attachment to get the steam in. Then the team seals the tile to protect it for the future. Costa Ibanoitse, the owner of Pinnacle Stone Restoration, walks us through how his team deep cleans terrazzo floors that are over 100 years old. Parts of the terrazzo floors were hidden under carpet and discovered as the room was being renovated. The most difficult part of this clean is carpet and glue removal. He removes the carpet with electric scraping machines and the carpet glue with handheld scrapers. Costa removes the glue by hand because it keeps the temperature low, which helps the glue come out more easily from the terrazzo. Grinding the terrazzo floors helps to flatten and even out the surface. Then, he moves on to the honing process, which cleans and polishes off the scratches left behind by the grinding process. He starts polishing using a 1,500 grit diamond pad, followed by 3,000 grit. After that, he uses another system that has much finer pads, which make the terrazzo harder and more durable. Then, it's time to seal. Costa uses a sealer that seeps into the terrazzo and protects it from stains. Burnishing the floors helps the sealer bring the terrazzo to its highest sheen. Courtney Lee and his team at Truman's Hardwood Floor Refinishing tackle dark, muddy-looking floors. They're covered with thick wax layers resulting from DIY attempts at revitalizing wood floors. The acrylic waxes from products that are meant for short-term solutions are extremely soft and don't harden up or cure. They sit on top of the floors instead of soaking in, allowing dirt, soil, and any airborne contaminants to bond to them. Courtney's team of floor technicians specializes in wax removal from hardwood floors. Floor refinishing requires sanding off existing coatings, but it's difficult to do with these layers of wax sitting on top because the wax will likely clog up the sanders. The team comes in to emulsify the wax, which takes it back to a liquid form and allows them to extract it from the floors. Buildup like this usually happens over the course of five to 20 years. They spray the floors with an emulsifier and let it sit for some time, depending on the severity and amount of wax. They do this section by section. They follow up with extraction tools, which remove the wax from the floors into the machine. Depending on how much wax there is, they repeat this two to three times. The buffer runs at a low speed during this process. There is a soft pad and a mesh screen on the bottom, which comes in different grits. The screen scratches off the old polyurethane so the team can apply new polyurethane. This is what seals and protects the hardwood floors and is typically the final layer before the wax. 
A splash guard is usually attached to the buffer to keep the wax from slinging onto the walls and baseboards. In some cases, like here, Courtney will scrape off the wax by hand. He does this when there is too much buildup on the floor. He'll scrape up as much as possible to prevent the wax from clogging up the vacuums in their machines, and then remove the residual as normal. Once Courtney removes the wax, the floor is back to its bare original state. In some cases, depending on what the homeowners want to do, he'll apply a new layer of polyurethane to finish the job.